In this video, we're going to talk about nucleophiles, specifically nucleophilic strength. But first, let's talk about the difference between a nucleophile and a base. So let's say we have one bromobutane. A nucleophile, we're represented by the letter N, usually has a lone pair and sometimes a negative charge. But in organic chemistry, the nucleophile typically attacks the carbon atom or a non-hydrogen atom. In this case, the leaving group, the bromide ion, is going to leave and we're going to replace it with the nucleophile. Now, a base will do something different. So let's say we have two bromobutane. And we have a base, a strong base. Rather than attacking a carbon atom, a base will go for a proton. It'll abstract a hydrogen atom. In this case, you would get an E2 reaction as opposed to an SN2 reaction. So within the subject of organic chemistry, a nucleophile typically goes after a carbon atom, whereas a base will go, go after a hydrogen atom. And that's a key difference between the two. Nucleophilic strength typically mirrors base strength, not always, but generally speaking. So consider the periodic table. Base strength increases towards carbon. Nucleophilic strength also increases towards carbon. So what this means is that the methyl carbanion is a better nucleophile than the amide ion, NH2 minus. That's a better nucleophile than hydroxide, which is a better nucleophile than fluoride. Now, in a protic environment, base strength doesn't mirror nucleophilic strength, but in an aprotic environment, it does. So in an aprotic environment, base strength goes towards fluorine. Nucleophilic strength also increases towards fluorine. So in an aprotic solvent, what this means is that fluoride is a better nucleophile than chloride, which is better than bromide, and that's better than iodide. Now, in a protic environment, fluoride is still the stronger base, but iodide is going to be the better nucleophile. So what this means is, let's say if you if the solvent is like water or methanol where it has hydrogen bonding that's going to be a protic solvent in a situation like that iodide is going to be the better nucleophile than bromide which will be better than chloride which will be better than fluoride so iodide behaves as a better nucleophile in a protic environment but fluoride behaves as a better nucleophile in an aprotic environment So here's a question for you. Which one is the better nucleophile? Methanol or methoxide? What would you say? When comparing similar atoms, nucleophilic strength typically correlates to base strength. Methoxide is the better base than methanol. And it's also going to be the stronger nucleophile. So it's going to be methoxide. If you're comparing an oxygen that is neutral versus an oxygen with a negative charge, the one with a negative charge will typically be the stronger nucleophile. Now, what if we were to compare hydroxide with the acetate ion? Which one is a better nucleophile? So in both cases, we're dealing with an oxygen with a negative charge. In this case, 
nucleophilic strength will mirror base strength. If we look at the conjugate acid of hydroxide, which is water, it has a pKa of 15.7. Acetic acid has a pKa of around 4.75. So this is the stronger acid, which means this is the weaker base. Therefore, hydroxide is the stronger base, which means it's going to be the better uh, nucleophile. So the answer is hydroxide. It's the stronger base and also the stronger nucleophile. Now, what about comparing phenoxide with acetate? Which one is the stronger nucleophile? The pKa of phenol is 10. For acetic acid, it's 4.75. So this is going to have the stronger conjugate acid, which makes it the weaker base. This has the weaker conjugate acid, which makes it the stronger base. And it's also going to be the stronger nucleophile. So in most cases, base strength typically mirrors nucleophilic strength. Now, what about comparing ammonia and water. Which one is going to be the stronger nucleophile? So we're comparing different elements in the same row. If you recall, nucleophilic strength increases towards the left. So it's going to be ammonia. Now, what if we compare the thiolate ion with an alkoxide ion. Which one is the better nucleophile? So we're comparing oxygen and sulfur. We need to define the, sol uh, the solvent when you you're dealing with atoms of different size. So let's say in water, which one is going to be the better nucleophile in water? Water is a protic solvent. In a protic solvent, nucleophilic strength increases towards iodide. It increases as you go down. So sulfur with a negative charge is going to be more nucleophilic than oxygen with a negative charge. Now, let's say if we have a similar situation, but in an aprotic environment. Let's say if this was dissolved in a, a crown ether. A crown ether is an aprotic solvent. In that case, which one would you say is the better nucleophile? In an aprotic environment, oxygen with a negative charge will be more nucleophilic than a sulfur atom with a negative charge. So that's basically it for this video. Hopefully it gave you a good idea in terms of how to identify which compound is going to be more nucleophilic. So just to review, if you have a neutral molecule with one that has a negative charge, typically the one that has a negative charge is going to be more nucleophilic. And nucleophilic strength increases towards the left. It also increases downward in a protic environment, but it, it increases upward in an aprotic environment. Now for those of you who are interested in getting more practice examples on SN1, SN2, E1, E2 reactions, I do have a practice test available and I'm going to post it in the description section below. So feel free to check the links uh, below this video for those of you who want more additional resources in preparation for your next organic chemistry exam.